Hello everyone, this is Alexander Kuklin. Thank you for staying with PersonalizedMedicineTV.com. Next is the news with Christina Carmichael. Christina? This is Christina Carmichael. Thank you for joining our first Pulse Aid Innovative Healthcare Show broadcasted on PersonalizedMedicineTV.com. Today is October 12, 2011, and in today's show we will discuss the recent news about a Nobel Prize winner who was awarded the coveted prize just after he died and how he fought his cancer with his own research until his death. Dr. Ralph Steinem of the Rockefeller University received the Nobel Prize on October 3, 2011. Unfortunately, the good news was clouded by the fact that Dr. Steinem had died. Nobel Prize winners always make big news, but in this case, the news became bigger because the recipient of the Nobel Prize was dead. According to the statutes of the Nobel Foundation, work produced by a person since deceased shall not be given an award. On October 3, 2011, the Nobel Assembly at the Karolinska Institute announced that their decision to award the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine to the late Ralph Steinem shall remain unchanged in, their, in keeping with their earlier announcement. As announced by the Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute earlier, Ralph Steinem, one of 2011 three, 11's three Nobel laureates in Physiology or Medicine, died on September 30th. This information was reached by the Nobel Assembly at Norlinska Institute via the president of the Rockefeller University, where Steinem worked on October 3rd, 2011. Earlier the same day, the Nobel Assembly had announced the 2011 Nobel laureates in physiology or medicine without knowing of Ralph Steinem's death. The Nobel Assembly said that the events that have occurred are unique and, to the best of our knowledge, are unprecedented in the history of the Nobel Prize. In light of this, the board of the Nobel Foundation has held a meeting this afternoon. According to the statues of the Nobel Foundation, work produced by, the, by a person since deceased shall not be given an award. However, the statutes specify that if a person has been awarded a prize and has died before receiving it, the prize may be presented. The foundation pointed out that the decision to award the Nobel Prize to Ralph Steinem was made in good faith based on the assumption that the Nobel laureate was alive. This was true, though not at the time of the decision, only a day or so previously. According to Reuters, in the last few years of his life, Dr. Ralph Steinem made himself into an extraordinary human lab experiment, testing a series of unproven therapies, including some he helped create, as he waged a very personal battle with pancreatic cancer. The winner of the 2011 Nobel Prize in Medicine, who died only three days before the award was announced on Monday, ultimately tried as many as eight unproven treatments. He felt that human clinical investigation was the highest form of research, that it was critical to engage in it. Dr. Sarah Schlesinger, Steinem's clinical lab director and colleague at New York's Rockefeller University told Reuters he had great criticism of how slowly the process moved. He was an impatient with data and mice, she added. Friends and colleagues said that Steinem was devoted to research that would make a difference in the lives of people. That became more apparent after his own cancer diagnosis, recalls Dr. Lewis Weiner, director of Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive, Comprehensive Cancer Center in Washington, D.C., who worked with Steinem on a cancer immunology panel through the American Association of Cancer Research. Because he was looking down the barrel of his own gun, in a sense, he shared the cancer patient's sense of urgency that we identify new and effect effective treatments, Weiner said. He didn't want to help held, be held hostage to failed concepts, to petty obstacles that interfere with the development of effective therapies. He wanted to see effective treatments made available to people so that they could be helped. Steinem spent his entire cancer career on immunology research for which he won the Nobel Prize, an honor he shares with American Bruce Beutler and French biologist Jules Hoffman for their contributions to explaining the immune system. Steinem's discovery of dendritic cells in 1973 led to the first therapeutic cancer vaccine, Dendrion's Provenge, which treats men with advanced prostate cancer. 
When Steiner was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer four and a half years ago, the cancer had already begun to spread to his lymph nodes. He elected to receive all the conventional therapy that was available. He had had surgery and conventional chemotherapy as well, but he was quite certain that it was unlikely to cure him, cure him or even allow him very much time. Schlesinger said the one year survival for what he had was less than 5%. Railing around, Dr. Michelle Nussensweig, head of nuclear immunology at Rockefeller, who had worked with Steinem for more than three decades, said Steinem had already been working on dendritic cell therapy when he became ill and wanted to try it himself. The medical community rallied around. The Food and Drug Administration regulators were quick and responsive, but did not cut the team any slack. Things that would have taken months to turn around, turned around in days, Lassinger said. Newsom's bike took a portion of Steinem's tumor and used that to grow cells in the lab that would help form the basis of personalized cancer treatments. Steinem initially got an experimental vaccine called GVAX, which was first developed by Dr. Elizabeth Jaffe at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore and is now being developed by Biosanti Pharmaceuticals. The first set of dendritic cells he received, we gave him in collaboration with a biotech company called Argos Therapeutics, Schlesinger said. The researchers made dendritic cells from Steinman's blood and from blood precursor cells. We charged them with RNA that had been extracted from his tumor at the time of the operation, and then we administered those cells to him. We, he got them from eight or nine, he got them eight or nine times over a course of several months, and then also received chemotherapy. Researchers at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas also offered a melanoma vaccine that we're, we're working on for Steinem to try. And then there were more conventional treatments. He got a chemotherapy drug from Eli Lilly, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Roche, and a drug from Roche's Genentech unit that interferes with so-called hedgehog signaling pathway that can become reactivated with certain cancers. All of the treatments had been cleared for use by the U.S. regulators in clinical trials. Steinem ultimately tried as many as eight therapies. Steinem lived for four and a half years after getting a diagnosis that typically kills people within a year or less. Colleagues say it was impossible to know what prolonged his life, whether it was surgery, chemotherapy, or the experimental treatments. Steinem was convinced it was his own beloved dendritic cells and the specialized immune system that eventually won him the Nobel Prize. Steinem died on Friday, September 30th. Thank you for watching. This has been an episode of Pulse Aid's Innovative Healthcare Show, and I am once again Christina Carmichael. Have a great day. Thank you, Christina. If you guys have any questions for Christina, please email at producers at personalizedmedicinetv.com. Once again, producers at personalizedmedicinetv.com. Have a great evening. Goodbye.